Hi hello everyone. Uh, Sunday, doing a, another video on the truck, of course. This is going to be just the throttle linkage, essentially, and the cable that goes from the throttle to the transmission. Uh, old days, it was called a kick-down cable, like a Turbo 350-400, uh, C5, C6, whatever, uh, 727 torque flight. Uh, all those transmissions had a kick-down cable, so the throttle hits a certain position, and usually it's in response to the secondaries of the carburetor opening up, it would actually downshift the transmission for you so you'd get better acceleration under higher throttle position. Uh, overdrive transmissions, when they came out with the GMs back in the early-ish, kind of mid-80s, starting with the uh, 200 and 700 R4s, they didn't have kick down per se. They have what's called a throttle valve. The valve is in the transmission itself and there was a physical connection, a cable, that goes between the throttle linkage and that valve to control line pressure. The line pressure is what determined what gear it would stay in. So instead of being on off with the kickdown cable, it's either like first, second, or second, third, this would freely shift, freely float per se, between all of the gears, especially the overdrive. So that cable, controls a valve in the transmission that allows the fluid to pass through the valve body and the line pressure will determine whether or not uh, the transmission spins down or up in two gears. It also, under high load, um, increases the pressure to hold the clutches together tighter, so the less chance of slipping. The importance of this throttle valve cable is not necessarily in what it does, it's that what it can do if it is not properly set up, and that is it can burn up your transmission. If the valve is not acting properly, you won't have enough line pressure and your clutches will slip. They'll just spin, just like riding the clutch in a manual car, and they'll wear out prematurely and they'll just burn up the transmission. So it's extremely crucial that the throttle valve cable, one, is positioned correctly, and two, is adjusted correctly. So um, that's what I'm going through today is part of the transition from the throttle body to the carbureted setup. I have to get this throttle position adapter on the truck and I'm making this video after the fact, so I already know how it's going to turn out, but I just wanted to explain a little more in detail why I had to go through all the steps you're going to see and why it was so important that I make sure all this is correct. So um, enjoy this part of the video. Um, it's uh, pretty short, but uh, it only pretty much deals with throttle cables and the TV cable, but just want to give you a little backstory on the end goal and the reason why this cable is so important. So up next is the video. Uh, today I'm trying to tackle some linkage on the carburetor throttle cable and the throttle valve cable, the TV cable for a 700R4 slash 4L60 transmission, overdrive GM transmission. This cable bracket right here is supposed to modify a square board carburetor to accept the TV cable and throttle. And throttle is fine because there's just a ton of adjustability on it. So you can put the throttle linkage wherever you want to get a nice, you know, little pre-tension on it and then get full uh, gas pedal action out of it. No problem. Problem is this bracket that on the back that mounts the TV cable is set back entirely too far. We're talking inches off. Um, I played with uh, flipping the lower bracket here around a little bit, different positioning and everything, and it's just not going to happen. So, you know, I was like, what the hell's going on? So I got on the internet and uh, found a video where somebody said that, yeah, same problem, putting an overdrive transmission in, which I'm not, red, I'm not putting an overdrive transmission in. This car had one to begin with, but the original factory was a 4.3 and the all the linkages were set way further forward for the throttle body so this bracket's supposed to fix that it's not I'm gonna have to modify it so I'm gonna get to play with the welder basically what we'll have to do is cut the attachment part of the bracket for the TV cable off of the stem and then move it forward so that it is in the right position so the TV cable can attach to the linkage and have enough throw to actually do its job back down on the transmission. So I'm gonna pull this thing off, um, cut it apart, and just go by what uh, this video I saw and try to weld it into a position that accepts this TV cable. This is 
the mock-up of the bracket modification. So you can tell I cut this piece from back here. It was attached down here and extended out to about here. So we've moved it forward basically the entire length of that bracket, which is a little over two inches. And hopefully that will get me the positioning I need on the TV cable to get the proper geometry and enough action out of the cable to operate the throttle valve and the transmission. So getting the welder set up, we're gonna put a couple of tacks on it, maybe probably just one or two until I know that it's gonna work and then uh, show you what the results are. Okay, here's the final product in all its ugliness. Spectacular welding, but one thing's for sure, it's got a lot of weld and it's stable. But there, I'm gonna weld it on the back side. So now we can offer it up to the carburetor and see what she looks like. So that's that. And you can tell it originally was stick sticking way back here. Now I can take the TV cable, mount it somewhere in here, and it will actually reach the linkage. Then there's still some fine adjustment that needs to be done, but that we'll figure that out after I get it bolted down to the transmission side and get the throttle connected. So that's the next part. I'm going to get this bolted down and then get the throttle bracket holder on and see how it all lines up. Okay, so the bracket is mounted on. I have got the cable attached down at the transmission. Now the next problem I ran into is on the TV cable. There is an adjustment right here. It's a little thumb detent. And then if you see here, this is actually grooved. It's notched um, like a zip tie. And you can make fine adjustments with the TV cable tension by pressing this thumb tab down and then sliding the cable in and out of the holder block. So you want that adjustment. You need that adjustment. But the way this bracket's made, if I put the cable in the way it's designed, I don't know if you can see on the front here, on this side right here, you see that little, let's see if I can get in front. That's so hard to do. Anyway, there's a keyway on that uh, bracket and there's a key that was, it was here. And so it can only go in the one direction. Well, that's factory with the factory bracket. Wasn't gonna work because if I flip this around, you could tell that would be the regular way to do it. This detent would be up against the top of this bracket and you'd never be able to make that adjustment. So I was like, this is crazy. It's not gonna work, what can I do? So continuing the fine tradition of uh, my engineering skills, I cut that uh, keyway off the cable so I could flip the bracket 180 degrees. Now I can reach underneath, hit the detent, make the adjustment and the bracket will mount like this and it gives me good geometry. It's a nice straight line between the uh, throttle linkage and the cable bracket. It's pretty square. So I do really believe this is gonna work just fine. So now I can take the bracket off, get my screws in this and uh, hopefully this first part of this bracket will be done and I can go on to the throttle linkage itself. Okay, there it is. Everything's in place. TV cable is in and I have the initial adjustment set and I've got quite a bit of fine adjustment set here. The way you want to do this, what I understand is uh, it has this clevis type connection here on the throttle linkage and you want just the slightest amount of preload on the valve. You don't want it even or slack with the valve. That's the cable itself. So you just want the slightest amount of preload on it so you get initial, as soon as you hit the throttle, you get initial response from the throttle valve. So I've done that. Um, I probably have a 16th of an inch, maybe, I don't know, three, 30 seconds of preload on the cable. Then I have the bracket up here installed. I just need to tighten it down. Once I get the adapter for the throttle cable, it's a little ball and socket. I need to get the adapter for an Edelbrock carb, but it's lined up perfectly with where it should be. So, all things being equal, as long as this welding job holds up, um, this is done. Uh, and it took all day. Well, three hours, three and a half hours anyway, just to get this part done. Um, I guess that's just a testimony and an example of what you're gonna go through if you do these projects. 
what you think, and I didn't think this was gonna be simple, but I didn't expect it to be welding and grinding, but it turned out that way. You just have to roll with it. You have to be prepared for what comes at you, assess the situation and uh, improvise, find a solution and then execute it. This one here actually, I think turned out pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with the results on this. Um, one thing checked off the box, uh, the designs I had on addressing some wiring for the starter, relooming the factory ignition trigger wire away from the headers, I was gonna have to cut it and I wanted to take it in an entirely different direction to keep it completely around the headers. The way it is now, it comes off that electrical junction block over there and then it goes down, ties into the battery cable and then goes snakes underneath the header. So it basically makes a wrap around the headers. I don't want that. That was fine with factory exhaust manifolds, but it's not gonna work with this. So I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna take it from that electrical block there along the firewall and then down behind the header across the transmission. That's gonna keep uh, all the heat or as much heat as possible away from it. And I've got some thermal tape. I'm gonna wrap those electrical connections in too. Um, if I do anything tomorrow, that'll be that, but we're expecting rain and some storms. Tomorrow maybe a washout, and that's probably for the best because i um, pretty tired, pretty sore, and I need some recovery time. But um, this one is done. Uh, very happy with it. Thanks for watching again, and next weekend I'll have more, I'm sure. I still haven't even got that simple little transmission pan and gasket service done that I need to do and refill. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start shopping radiators, figure out what kind I want. I'm pretty sure it's going to be at least a two, if not a three core with electric fans. I don't want to run the clutch fan factory setup on this. I want electric fans relays and I want it to be able to cool off with the ignition off kind of like a modern car does. So I'm going to look into a setup like that and uh, get that coming and, uh, loose ends after that, this guy will be up, uh, hopefully moving under its own power. So thanks for watching again. Please like, share, and subscribe. Tell um, anybody you'd like to follow along, and I will talk to you next time.